What is going on guys? Jason Burke here, Styles Clash for Life, coming at you on YouTube and tonight I've got some football focus. The Pittsburgh Steelers just got done playing the Buffalo Bills in week 14 of the 2020 NFL season and once again by my tone and tenor it was a rough week. Uh, I apologize for the different background and the drastic change in lighting. Uh, a couple days ago my kitchen lights blew out so I've got no direct light in the kitchen and I don't have any camera lights that are good enough to evenly disperse the lighting on me so living room different background tonight. A uh, little bad lighting. I hope it doesn't discourage you guys from uh, watching this review. But the Steelers played the Bills in a primetime matchup and in my mind it was a nice chance for us to come out and get a big statement win. Buffalo has an underrated team. They are by all accounts the third best team in the AFC now. So it would have been nice to come out on prime time with all the injuries we have and all the back-to-back -back games. And we only had six days rest playing on last Monday night. So it's uh, it was our, what, fourth game in 18 days or something like that. So playing all these back-to-back -back games with all the COVID cases and all the injuries coming into this week, especially on defense, and playing against Buffalo and no one picking us, coming off a loss. It would have been so nice to come out here in prime time and beat such a quality conference team like Buffalo shorthanded like this and getting a statement win, getting us back on track to 12-1 and would have been a big, big win for us. And I thought in my heart of hearts we could pull it off. We did not. Uh, the game was not very convincing. Um, it was uh, almost a tale of two halves. It was pretty much uh, Pittsburgh's game. Pittsburgh felt pretty much uh, not, I would say, dominant because the offense was slow, but the defense had one of the best halves of the entire season. It was a pretty much completely dominant first half by the defense. There were two plays uh, that caused the score to be what it was coming out of the first half. Pittsburgh, uh, again, this, this is one of those games where it was, uh, it was two uh, dominant defensive teams coming out. Lots of three and outs, lots of punts early. I think it was like seven consecutive punts or something like that. Um, really took five or six drives to even get any first downs or anything on either side. The offense came out dropping the ball once again. That is our biggest issue on offense for the third week in a row. And I especially, I went off last week. I talked about the seven or eight drops we had last week, about what a big deal it was that guys that get paid to catch the ball weren't catching the ball. For, uh, for an offense like Pittsburgh's, we have uh, the new philosophy as a, a short passing team. No run game, protect the quarterback who's older. Ben gets the ball in two and a half seconds. He throws it out for a quick play, and our playmakers have to catch the ball and get downfield. And if our guys catching the ball to get downfield aren't catching the ball, they can't get downfield. It happened again tonight, third game in a row. We came out, Deontay Johnson came out with three targets, one catch, two drops right in his hands, not looking the ball into his body. Two drops early on. He got benched. Next drive, Eric Ebron comes out, the other culprit of the drops. Comes out on third down, has a ball right in his hands, drops it, causing another uh, punt for us. So then he gets benched very shortly and comes back in. I think he missed like one drive. But uh, once again, Deontay and Ebron are the culprits of the drops. They have been the two most inconsistent set of hands on our team this year. And again, Deontay has, is a great playmaker. He's got one of the most complete skill sets of the entire team. He's got Antonio Brown in his prime potential in terms of catching the ball, making guys miss, getting open in the middle of the field, uh, making moves after the catch. He is a complete receiver when it comes to quick moves and playmaking and footwork and putting it all together when he can do it. But first it was the injuries, and now it's the hands. Something is inside his brain, especially tonight. Those two targets that he dropped early on, very easy targets. Uh, he got benched for quite a while, came back like mid-third quarter, caught a few passes uh, to get downfield, redeemed himself a little bit with a couple nice catches downfield. Uh, but all in all, he's got to get out of his head. He's had a really rocky season. He's been the model of inconsistency. Eric Ebron as well. Um, he makes a lot of plays at tight end. He can run some routes in the middle. He can catch some hard contested balls. But he drops a lot of easy balls. A lot of middle of the field uncontested balls, especially on third downs. You can't drop those passes, especially for the offense the way it is now. And the run game being so missing. Oh my god, that, that, that run game is more missing than the princess, Princess Peach and Mario Brothers. When Mario is running around the castles trying to find her and she's nowhere, that's where the run game is. That, I have no idea what's going on. The play calling is still bad. The, the inside shotgun handoff is being called too much. The, the, the grouping on the field is not the right grouping for that play call in particular. So guys like Connor and Snell don't excel in that kind of play calling. 
Uh, Derek Watt, once again, is not being put on the field. It's in spite of being healthy. We signed a fullback in the offseason to use him. Haven't used him at all. Um, to make matters worse, uh, even though Connor was back tonight, which is good to see him back, but uh, so many offensive line injuries. My goodness, the injuries are a huge story in this game. But again, when your receivers are dropping the short, easy passes and your run game can't get going, you're not going to get much going on offense. So uh, we came out. I think it was our fifth or sixth drive in. We did come down the field and get a, uh, a touchdown to maybe it was a field goal. Yeah, I think it was a field goal. We came to, uh, no, no, we got to tie. I don't know. My notes are all scattered. I'm as scattered tonight as the freaking Pittsburgh Steelers were. Pittsburgh came down the field, uh, got a score, and felt like they were getting ahead. It started to feel like Pittsburgh, the defense looked so good out there. And I want to give credit in the first half to that defense. Cameron Sutton has been the single biggest bench player for us all year long. He filled in in the slot for Hilton when Hilton was hurt, getting about four turnovers in six weeks when he played for Mike Hilton. He uh, came in last week and played very, very admirably for Joe Hayden on the outside. Uh, he came in tonight. Joe Hayden w was not uh, playing tonight as well. So many injuries again on defense, and I'll talk about those. But Joe Hayden did not play tonight. Sutton came in for him and played extremely well. Uh, he got off the edge on a play, and he hit the quarterback in a nice blitz. He also got, uh, what do I have here? He got a fumble recovery tonight, so being around the ball again. He was, was playing the ball, getting a lot of deflections, and knocking the ball out of guys' hands. Uh, another big uh, shout out to a guy who, who was back this week, uh, Stephen Nelson. He was played the first half. He played the outside very, very well. He was going after the ball. He was staying tight in coverage. He was rallying to the ball quick, and he was going for the strife. He was stripping the ball every time it came in. So he had Stefan Diggs to very small numbers in the first half, had several knockdowns, uh, pass deflections in there, was playing very physically. Second half, he got tired, got blown up, and that, that whole thing went out the window. Um, Mike Hilton, another big strong game for him. That is two games in a row. Mike Hilton has been a difference maker. He got an interception this week. He's played very, very well. Uh, since his return, he's showing that not only is he a good run stopper and a good quarterback blitzer, but he also can make some coverage things happen. It's two games in a row for him. Uh, but again, the defense can only do so much. When you're as injured as you are on defense coming into this game, and then you get more injured in this game on defense, and your offense can't even get first downs to help you out, and then toward the end of the half, which was the big turning point in this game, the offense throws a pick six. Um, there's not Your defense is eventually going to get tired. I say it every single week. Your def this defense is elite. It's possibly the best defensive unit in the entire NFL. But again, when you're banged up, you're playing back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back games, and your offense gives you no help running or passing, there's not much you can do about it. Uh, your defense eventually is going to get tired. This one got shredded um, in, in the second half, uh, which caused Buffalo to run us out. Um, again, first half, pressure on Josh Allen was really good. Uh, Cam Hayward didn't show up much on the stat sheet, but he got a lot of pressures. Uh, Highsmith as well, not on the stat sheet too much, but but got back in the quarterback's face. Uh, TJ Watt gets held like every single play now. They, they only call it once every five or six times, but that dude gets held constantly. Um, so again, Pittsburgh uh, came down. I... I I believe they got the uh, first half touchdown was to, to James Washington. That's what it was. It was toward the end of the first half. That's what my, I couldn't picture in my head. James Washington came in for Deontay Johnson, had a nice play where he came down and ran uh, in cut, made a nice, nice move to the inside, caught a clean pass. Glad to see him once again in there making plays. Every time he comes in and gets a chance to get targets, he makes plays. He has really solid hands. Good to see him scoring a touchdown. So Pittsburgh goes up 7 0. Uh, I think it might have been, uh, yeah, 7 0 at that point. It seems like Pittsburgh is going to start to run away because the defense is so dominant. They're getting turnovers. They got two first-half turnovers. They had scored a touchdown. Things felt like Buffalo had nothing going for it. Um, Josh Allen was just getting pressured constantly, couldn't get anything really downfield at all. Um, really, you know, solid job by, by everyone on the defense. Uh, even, even the inside linebackers who came in really banged up because uh, Robert Spillane wasn't in this game. Devin Bush was already out. Uh, Vince Williams was on the COVID list this week, so all three, our two starting linebackers and our starting fill-in, were all out this week. So we came in this week with our starters, being Avery Williamson, who was the guy we traded for from the Jets to, to start the season, who wasn't on the team coming into this year. And uh, Marcus Allen, the third-string safety, who's played on special teams, came in to start at linebacker this week. So very thin inside linebacker starting, my goodness. 
And I said to myself, and I tweeted this out, where the heck is UG3? Ulysses Gilbert III was our highly touted rookie last year who played very well in preseason. Uh, seemed like he was going to be a breakout guy this year playing in relief on the inside and can't even get in when we're starting a free agent acquisition who's not fully acclimated yet and uh, our third string safety. We couldn't play UG3 more. He did play more in the second half. Um, but for some reason didn't get the start. And I'm thinking, okay, he was activated for a reason. Why isn't he playing? And then he came in a little later. Uh, but even for that depleted group, though, played really well in the first half. Um, had a little bit of trouble play, uh, guarding Cole Beasley. He got a few nice short slot passes that, that caused him to break open, but didn't do anything huge. Um, everything looked good, and then all of a sudden Ben stared down Juju Smith-Schuster, threw an inside ball. Juju got a little uh, bodied off the block. The, the the corner came in off the slot and kind of body Juju, took the ball away, ran it 30 yards back into the end of the end zone for a touchdown. Um, Buffalo then went up uh, 9-6 to six and then missed the extra point. Uh, so all of a sudden, you know, Pittsburgh gives up a field goal, which was on a play that was called uh, pass interference. Or not pass interference, I'm sorry. Um, roughing the quarterback was called on Henry Mondo. Mondo hit him in the in the stomach, in the one area you're allowed to hit him, and didn't fall on him, did, didn't go after the knee, didn't fall on him, didn't use his force. Uh, was still called for roughing the passer. One of the worst calls that I've seen in the entire NFL all year, especially against the Steelers. Um, that cost us a big first down, which Buffalo went down and got a field goal on. And then uh, Ben throws the bad pick six uh, on our end of the field. So all of a sudden, in spite of our defense playing a lights-out half, we've got nine points on the board, six by the offense. And even with the missed extra point, we're down nine to six, or uh, nine to seven at the half. So all of a sudden, we're down in spite of a perfect off uh, defensive half. So that's very deflating, and you feel like you're in trouble. Going into halftime, in spite of your defense playing dominantly, in the second half, Buffalo comes down right away. Stephon Diggs finds his groove. And he he owned the city of Pittsburgh in that second half. He was he was getting off the ball. He was pushing Cam Sutton to the side. Uh, he was finding himself wide open downfield on comeback routes. He was out, out physicaling our cornerbacks. He was just doing everything uh, on us in the second half. He wound up with like 100 and, 120 yards receiving. And I got to say probably uh, close to 90 of that was in the second half. He dominated Pittsburgh uh, on third downs. Uh, Pittsburgh's defense could not get off the field on third down against Buffalo. A um, couple of back-to-back -back scoring drives. Uh, they scored on that drive, came down and scored again on us. Um, again, Cole Beasley was getting open in the slot. You can't really blame the inside linebackers too much. But then all of a sudden, uh, for, for as good of a game as Steven Nelson played in the first half, did not play very well in the second half. Uh, Josh Allen, uh, they, they were defending against our pressure. We started to run some all-out blitzes in the third, um, but didn't, didn't really get home too much. So Josh Allen had more time to find uh, guys like Gabriel Davis and uh, Stephon Diggs, who were beating Steven Nelson. Um, so that, that's pretty much what happened. Buffalo got out to a big lead. We came back down and scored a touchdown with Juju and a two-point conversion with Ebron, so it seemed like we were only down by eight points. We had some life all of a sudden with like a quarter and a half to go. Plenty of time on the clock. Pittsburgh's feeling good, and then um, Ben goes down, throws a pick, and that's pretty much it. Um, so again, not much going on offense. I'll read you these stats, and you can tell me how anemic uh, this team is. Once, I think, third streak, straight game in a row, Pittsburgh scores under 20 points. And when you're on the road against a good Buffalo team who's got both sides of the ball working for them, especially when Diggs is getting open, uh, there's not much you can do. Buffalo wins 26-15. The uh, stats, Big Ben, 21 of 37. At least he didn't throw the ball as much tonight, but didn't help us. 21 of 37, only 187 yards. Uh, 21 completions for 187 yards, not a big stat line. Two touchdowns, two picks. Both picks were bad. Um, the the pick six really killed the momentum and really changed the entire shift of the game. Pittsburgh was in control, I feel like, until that pick six at the end of the half and then going in uh, being down in spite of our defense was really rough for us. So Big Ben, 21-37, 187, two touchdowns, two picks. Both picks were bad. Uh, James Conner, our leading rusher tonight with 18 yards. Uh, Conner carries the ball 10 times for 18 yards. I think uh, Jalen Samuels had 15 yards on the ground as well. Absolutely nothing. Uh, by then, though, we had used all three of our reserve offensive linemen. We had three offensive line injuries uh, tonight. So, <laughs> so many guys going out. Gerald Hawkins was playing. Um, we, we lost another one. Our, our rookie we, we drafted uh, in the draft tonight came into play and then got hurt and was out for the game. So, more injuries on the offensive line. So, Connor, 10 for 18, got nothing going. And that was our high rusher for the night. So, go figure. Juju, really good first half. Pretty much all of his stuff in the first half. Um, 
Six catches, 55 yards, and a touchdown. I wish he got more looks in the second half, but no one did anything on either side of the ball, really, in the second half behind, besides that one drive. James Washington got a touchdown as well. Uh, Deontay, I think, had 40 yards on three catches after that those first two drops when he came back in. So uh, Juju was our only real standout tonight. Washington with the one nice touchdown, but not much to speak of in 15 points. Uh, two good offensive drives, and that was about it. Defensively, again, Mike Hilton with the interception played well. Cam Sutton on the fumble recovery. He had a really good first half, was kind of quiet in the second half. Tyson Alualu got a sack and a forced fumble. That was our only sack tonight. We did break the all-time consecutive game sack record. I think it was either 69 or 70. Uh, I think it was 70 straight games, which was the record tonight. Tyson Alualu with our only sack tonight. So good job on the Buffalo offensive line for defending against us. Uh, sack, forced fumble. Uh, Williamson, again, playing on the inside, uh, linebacker spot, coming in for his first start with all the injuries. Ten tackles. I thought he played very well against the run. He got a few nice hits on the quarterback. Uh, he did have a hard time uh, covering inside. Beasley and a couple of the tight ends got a few short ones on him. But nothing drastic. He didn't play badly in coverage, and he played very well against the run. So credit to Williamson. Um, again, I'm going to put part of this on, on the COVID situation where the situation with the Titans happened where we got we got pushed back. Uh, and our bye week got put into week three. When you play, you know, 12, 13, 14 consecutive games in the season, you're going to have a lot of injuries. Of course, the second COVID situation happened with the Ravens. So now we're at, what, four games in 18 days. So we're injured. Our bye week is long, long past. We've been playing all these consecutive games. We've been playing on a much shorter schedule. It's been throwing us off. We haven't practiced the same um, with all, all the COVID stuff and all the game rescheduling. But that's only part of it. Again, uh, you take all the injuries and all the COVID stuff. Yeah, we got hit kind of hard with that. By the same token, we had many opportunities. Um, again, when you're dropping the ball on offense, when you're calling bad plays, uh, when your line's banged up, when you can't get any run game going whatsoever, uh, when, when on defense you, you get tired and you're playing with uh, third, fourth string uh, linebackers, this kind of stuff's going to happen. Uh, I credit the defense for playing as well as they did without so many guys. But again, when your offense isn't helping, you're getting three and outs all the time. You're back on the field. You're going to get tired. Buffalo gets the win here. Josh Allen played pretty well. Stephon Diggs played very, very well. And they, uh, in the fourth quarter, they just, on third down, they kept extending the drive longer and longer and longer. There was nothing we could do. Pittsburgh now drops to 11-2. and two. Uh, We are now the second seed in the AFC. Kansas City's got a full game lead. Uh, they won today over us. So we are fighting for that bye. And Buffalo now is only one game behind us with the tiebreaker as well. So Buffalo is one game behind us. And if they tie us, they will jump us because they beat us tonight. So we are now fighting for even second seed at this point. So Pittsburgh has to continue fighting. Hope that Kansas City falls down a loss uh, so we can get back to uh, that first seed. We're fighting for our lives here with two consecutive losses. Thankfully, we have one of the worst teams in the league next week. We're playing Cincinnati without their quarterback, so that should be a game we win, but I'm not jinxing us right now. We're not playing very well. Hopefully we will take the next uh, eight days. We're playing next Monday night. We have an eight-day in between this time. Let's rest up. Let's get healthy. Let's come back strong in prime time against the bad Bengals team and get a big win. What would you guys think of this game? Tell me in the comments below. I'm sorry I ran long tonight. It was a long-winded, rough loss, different setting, rough, rough week at my house. So tell me in the comments below, like, comment, and subscribe. Talk to me about this game and the game coming up next week. Let's get healthy. Let's get some wins again. Let's go Steelers.